Good morning. As we journey through Isaiah today, we're on chapters 53, 54, and 55. And 53 begins with this question, who believes what we have heard? Who has believed what we have heard? You know, and so it's a question, you know, uh, of who has heard God's word and who has believed God's word. You know, for the Lord himself has been revealed, it says in verse 1. And then as we get to verse 3, we find words that we we hear often around Easter time. Lent, he who he was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity as one who was hidden from the faith. He was despised and held him of no account. And And so these... These verses, you know, basically pretty much the rest of chapter 53, you know, talks about Jesus as Messiah and the pain, the suffering, the rejection, uh, the loneliness that that he feels um, when he has been arrested and been, you know, mocked and crucified and, and is, you know, they're hanging him on the cross. We hear these words and, you know, surely he has borne our infirmities, carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God. He was wounded for our transgressions. Powerful words, you know, that, you know, he redeems us. He He gave himself for us, and it's it was God's work. The Lord, verse 6, the last part of it, well, all of it. We, have, we like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of all. You know, you know and we do. We... we I've said it so many times, it just seems like a broken record. We sin. We just plain do. We go astray. But all of our sins have been laid on Jesus. You know, and in verse 7, he was oppressed. He was afflicted. Yet he did not open his mouth like a lamb that was led to slaughter. It's just, you know, when he was being examined, you know, have you nothing to say? You know, and Jesus remained silent. You know, it'll tell us during part of his, part of the questioning and the, the interrogation that he goes through as he leaves himself for us. And in the last part of chapter 53, he was numbered with the transgressors, yet he bore the sins of many and made intercession for the transgressors. And and I remember commenting, you know, when we were looking at New Testament last year, you know, that, you know, um, you know, he has, he has died for many. And here again, it says, he has borne the sins of many. And, you know, it gives me heartache that he doesn't, hasn't borne the sins for all, but not everybody believes in God. Not everybody believes in Jesus. Not everyone accepts him as Lord and Savior. And so for those that don't accept Jesus or know him as Lord and Savior, you know, they, they can't lay their sins on him, you know. And, 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 and these places in the Bible where it says that, you know, he has borne the sins of many, you know, it's it's a reminder to me that not everybody is going to be saved. As, as much as New Age theology and so many feel-good preachers today will tell tell people that, you know, they want to hear what they want to hear, that doesn't matter. You know, everybody will be saved, everybody. But, you know, there are words in the Bible like this that 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 remind me that, you know, God being a gracious and merciful God, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, um, does still have some of that righteous anger. And not everyone believes in or calls upon God's name. Um, chapter 54, verse 4 again, Do not fear, you will not be ashamed, do not be discouraged, for you will not suffer disgrace. You know, and, you know, the do not fear, do not be afraid, I mean, we have that fear. We have, we can't be not afraid. But and the be not, do not be discouraged. I mean, oftentimes we want to give up. You know, we want to, you know, just throw in the towel and say enough. But you know, don't be discouraged. I mean, God will give us the strength to get through each and everything it is that we need to face in our day's time. Um, so this do not be discouraged is. Is good news to a good reminder for us to 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 know that you know today may be a hard day, uh, but tomorrow we have a promise of another day and a new beginning. Verse nine and ten is that like the days of Noah, as I swore on the waters of Noah, would never do to the earth again. So I have sworn to you, I will not be angry with you and I will not rebuke you. 
Verse 10, but my steadfast love shall not depart from you. Again, you know, God promised that he would never again destroy the earth, you know, as he did with the flood. And, and he promises here that, you know, he will, his love will never depart from us. Um, go to chapter 55. Um, and here again, there's invitations and, and words that we hear, um, or hopefully you've heard, you know, Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, buy and eat. Come buy milk and well, wine without money, without price. I mean, how do we do that? How do we, you know, we don't go to the grocery store. We don't go to the, the department stores and, and, and get something for nothing. I mean, it just, you know, even if you have a coupon, there are restrictions and stuff. But here with God, you know, it says, you know, come and receive your forgiveness. You know, and, you know, why do you spend your money for that which isn't bread and labor for things that don't satisfy? You know, to know God and to, to have that promise of God written upon our hearts and our minds is is so important. Verse 6, seek the Lord while he may be find, found, call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the God and righteous their thought. Let them return to the Lord. You know, it, it's a call, I mean, for the, for those that know God to, to remember and for those that don't know God to somehow turn to God. And, and for those that don't know God, how are they going to find out about God unless we tell them. And then we have, in verses 8 through 11, we have some pictures of God that remind us that he is so much more than we are. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For the heavens are higher than yours, so that my ways are higher than yours, and my thoughts are higher than yours. And in verse 11, so my word shall go out from my mouth, and it shall not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that for which I purpose, and it will succeed in the thing which I sent it. You know, and my word will go out. And we talk about Jesus as being the word of God. You know, the Bible is the written word of God. Jesus is the living word of God. And this word of God, Jesus Christ, came into the world so that we might know God's love, God's grace, God's forgiveness, the 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 length that, that God will go to for us. And Jesus, this word of God that came into the world, accomplished the purpose for which he came. You know, he, he, he gave his life for you and for me on the cross to show us, to demonstrate us, to us, the enormity of God's love. So Jesus coming into the world made a difference. It shows us that. And... And just as I said, just when I'm talking about, you know, you know, that for the salvation of many, you know, not everybody knows Jesus. But it's our task as those that do know to help spread that word and to remain and to tell others about the joy of knowing Jesus as our Lord and Savior.